verses 43 and 44. This section of Scripture in your Bible is often labeled as the Sermon on the Mount. And I would encourage you, if you have never read the Sermon on the Mount, for you to do so. There is so much good stuff in the words that Jesus speaks at this time that it is really just phenomenal. I mean, there's plenty of phenomenal stuff in Scripture, but the Sermon on the Mount is a fantastic passage that, that I think everyone should read. And in that passage of Scripture lies possibly one of the most difficult commands in all of Scripture. And that's what we'll talk about today. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. And I pray, God, that you just would hide me behind the cross, that I would preach and teach in a way that brings glory to you. God, I pray that you help us to hear your word today and maybe be encouraged by it, God. Days like today are, are kind of down, and dear Lord, we come in here, some of us, maybe all of us, tired and with stuff going on in our lives, dear Lord. When it's dark and rainy, it don't help, dear Lord. Sometimes on days like today, we just feel kind of blocked. But dear Lord, even if some may have come into the room today feeling this way, God, that your Holy Spirit would bring would bring joy to our hearts. God, I pray that through your word you would speak to us and, and let us draw closer to you. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When we look at passages like Matthew chapter 5, 43 and 44, that is a difficult thing to do. Now, we may be tempted to do just what Jesus addresses here. You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now that, of course, would be the easy thing to do. It's very easy for us, hopefully in this room, to love one another as neighbors and as a community and as friends, even should some of us live farther apart than others. It should be easy for us to come together and to love each other, and indeed it is. We look around and we can see Folks shaking hands and hugging and smiling and laughing. And sometimes we even cry together. But that's part of loving one another. That's part of being there for one another. That comes easy to us, loving our neighbors, loving our friends, loving our family. Now, you may be saying, well, you don't know some of the people in my family. But humor me here. Those things are easy for us to do. But what is difficult for us to do is to love those who hate us. Now, when we speak of love and hate, we see those terms throughout the Scripture quite frequently. And, and sometimes we may be tempted to think that, that it's okay to hate. We may, we may be tempted to twist certain Scriptures into the way that we want them to be to make them fit our own bad attitudes and hatred that we harbor up. We just looked at one of those passages a few weeks ago in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that speaks of a time to hate. Even in Scripture, when we look at the Old Testament, we see that there are times that God speaks of hate, that there are things that God hates. Now, as with many emotions we see in Scripture, hate in and of itself is not necessarily a bad emotion. Nor are other emotions that we may always label as bad, such as anger and uh, jealousy. These are all emotions that we see of God, that we see of Jesus. There are times that God says that he is a jealous God. There are times that God is angry even with his people. We even see scriptures in the New Testament in which Jesus is angry. We see a passage in the New Testament where Jesus speaks of the practices of the Nicolaitans and a revelation, and he says, I hate those practices. So we see these, these, these emotions that we may tend to label always as bad, hate and, and anger and jealousy, but like every emotion, 
there is a good part to those emotions as well. Now, when God hates, he doesn't hate people perhaps in the same way that you and I hate. Now, when we have a hatred for someone, it's typically because of something they have done. We are angry with them. We are bitter with them. There is something in our heart that is evil that draws us to hate. Now, God certainly hates sin, and that is clear. It will not take you long to study the Old Testament, and there are references where God lays out some sin, and he said, I hate these things. Perhaps the old saying, love the sinner and hate the sin, is overused. It is a bit cliche, but really that's the type of thing that we see in Scripture. That God hates sin, but he does not hate the sinner. There are times in life where perhaps there are things that we should hate. When people do things that are evil, that are against God's word, and they live in sin, we should not love such things. That's the problem with our world today. Our world loves the things that it should, in fact, hate. There is a time for hate. There is a place for hate. There are things that among Christians that should be hated because God himself hates such things. This could be true for other emotions that we see as well. Jealousy is not always a good emotion, but at times perhaps it's a beautiful emotion. In the case of God being a jealous God, he is not jealous for, for something that others have that he doesn't have, which is really the jealousy that more times than not we struggle with. But God is jealous for something that he owns. That is his people. They are his people, but yet oftentimes God's people seek after other gods. And he is jealous for his people because what is his is being taken or drawn away by something else. I would say that if there's a man in this room who has a wife and there is some other man who begins to flirt with his wife, and his wife begins perhaps to flirt back a little bit, it is a natural and good thing for us to be jealous in such situations. Should we not be jealous in such situations and say, okay, husband, okay, wife, go and do whatever you want to do? Is that really love? But that's perhaps a time that jealousy is a good thing. Of course, jealousy is never a good thing when we see something that someone else has that we desire and we are jealous of their success and we are jealous of what they have and they are jealous of, of, of whatever it may be and we become angry and we become bitter. That is not a good type of jealousy. The same could be said of other emotions like anger that we have briefly discussed. Perhaps there are times when it is right for us to be angry in the same way that there are things that God hates, there are sins that God hates, there are actions that God hates, perhaps we should hate sin in such a way. Perhaps if we hated sin in such a way, we would sin less than we do. But perhaps there are times that we need to be angry. Perhaps someone does something that's not right. Perhaps your spouse takes the paycheck and is feeling really lucky and takes the whole paycheck for the month and goes to the casino and puts it on red and comes home and says, oh, by the way, honey, I don't have enough money to buy food this month because I, I lost it all at the casino. Now, a spouse could just say, well, I understand and I will not be angry because that's not right. Or the spouse could say, what are you doing? Why did you do that? Sometimes it's right for us to be angry. There are things that we need to hate. There are perhaps times that we need to be jealous and times that we need to be angry. But to be angry with someone does not mean that you do not love them. And here's the difficulty for us as human beings. We, we have a hard time. It's a, it's a fine line between an anger that's, that's perhaps right and an anger that leads us to go overboard. A jealousy that shows that we really love someone to a jealousy that drives us to really hate somebody and be envious and bitter when we see them. We see these emotions of God, Jesus, throughout the scriptures. But perhaps the most difficult one is to love your enemies. 
because it is never right. Even though there are things that God hates, hate, it is never right to hate other people. It's never right to hate them, no matter how much they do to you. And it seems as though that might have been the thought process of some of the people here in Jesus' day, that, that they were tempted to hate. And maybe they were justifying their hate. And maybe there are some in this room today, and you are trying to justify your hate. But there is no justification for hate. Instead, Jesus commands us to do just the opposite. It's easy to love those who love you, but it's not so easy to love those who hate you. And so what does Jesus say? He says, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, there is no better instruction for us than that. Than from the words of Jesus, there is no better instruction as to how we deal with those that we hate or are tempted to hate. And that is that we pray for them. Now, Jesus says to love them, and we may say, man, that is hard to do. How in the world, God, do I love those who have done such evil against me? And that's a good question, and that is a real struggle, I would say, for everybody in this room. There are times that people do such heinous things to us or to people we love that we cannot even see possible that we would ever come to a point to love them. But what does Jesus say? He says to pray for them. That has to be the first step. There is no other way that we can get to a place of loving people who do evil to us other than to pray for them. Praying for them may even be difficult. To entertain the notion of love may seem impossible. To think about praying for them may seem only slightly less than impossible. But as begrudgingly as we may do it, that needs to be our first step. Perhaps you come into this room today with some hatred in your heart. Or maybe it's a hatred that's only been there for a week, for a month. Maybe it's a hatred that has been there for years. That's the thing with hatred. The longer we let it grow, the more out of control it becomes. And hatred, if left unchecked, will turn us into a monster. Oh, we hate people. And when we hate people, it makes us feel anger. And when it makes us feel anger, we say and we do things and we can't even stand the sight of that person or anyone related to that person. And pretty soon our hatred has turned us into the evil one. The one who has done evil against us that we cannot stand, if our hatred for others is not kept in check, we become the monster. And so how do we stop that? Because we don't want to be those who are overtaken by hate. We want to be those who learn to love like God loves and learn to forgive how God forgives. And you sit here today and you say, but people have done things and I can't forgive them. Well, I'm going to tell you where to start today. You start where Jesus says to start. You pray for them. As hard as it may be, you pray for them. And you may pray today, and you may utter the words, God, all right, I pray for that person. They're super evil. I don't want nothing to do with them, but God, I'm praying for them because Jesus told me to. And that may be your prayer. As grumpy and as, and as, and as bad as that prayer is, maybe that's where you start. But you have started. The process of love and forgiveness starts for us, for you and I, with prayer. And here is the thing that I think we will all discover if you have not discovered this. Is when you begin to pray for someone, it may not be easy the first time you do it. It may not be easy the hundredth time you do it. But if you make an effort to say, God, I'm going to do this, even if I don't want to because you say it's right, then your heart is already in the right place. If you continue to pray for people, even begrudgingly, it shows that your heart is already in the right place. God, I'm doing it because you tell me to. I still don't feel right, God. I still don't feel good about it. But God, I'm going to be persistent because your word, Jesus Christ, tells me to pray, so I'm going to pray. And what we will discover 
is that over time, God will begin to change our hearts. It's a crazy thing. And you may be surprised that it may occur far quicker than you have ever imagined. The power of prayer is so strong that perhaps after only a short amount of time of praying, it could completely alleviate a lifetime of hatred. But you must start the process. You must pray for those who persecute you. And what a beautiful thing it is when we begin to read the words of Jesus here, as difficult as they are, but as simple as they are, and we begin to put the commands of Jesus into practice, and we begin to love those who have done evil to us. What, a, what, a, what a, an amazing thing to consider. That not only, perhaps, that, that we could get to a point where we could forgive those who have done us evil, I mean, just to get to that point through prayer is phenomenal. But that we can actually get to a point in our life that people who have done evil to us and those around us, that not only could we forgive them, but we could love them. Now, what is love? What is love in its most perfect, most purest form? Greater love knows no man than this, that one would lay down his life for another. If you see people that you hate, that you struggle with, that you're not sure if you love them or not, well, answer this question. If they were in a great time of need and you could meet that need, would you do it? If the answer to that is no way, then guess what? You have not figured out what it means to love somebody. You can think of it in the most simplest terms. If you're driving down the road and it's raining outside and it's nasty and you see somebody who has stole from you, who has done you wrong, who has done evil, they killed your dog, and you see them on the side of the road and their cars broke down and they need help changing the tire because they're old and decrepit and cranky and been evil to everybody and you want to drive by and say, that's what they deserve. Let them sit there and deal with it. That's what hatred says. But when we have forgiven somebody and we love somebody, it says, you know what? Regardless of what they are, have done, I will do what is right. I will help those who have wronged me. That is what love is. That's different from like. That's not to say that you got to go sit down and have coffee with somebody and visit with them and pretend like everything's fine. There's a difference. There's some people you like. You want to sit down, you want to talk to them, you want to, you want to visit with them, you want to hang out with them, and that's good. There's some people maybe you just don't like them that much, but there is a difference, I believe, between liking someone and loving someone. If you don't like somebody, you might not sit down and have a cup of coffee with them, but would you save their life if their life was in danger? That's what love does. Love doesn't like everything, but it loves everyone. And there is no greater example of love than Jesus Christ. Now, we look at people in this world. I'm talking about evil people. And if we're honest, we probably could put ourselves in that category. But let's talk about the, the really, really evil people. I'm talking about the ones that have done the wrong to you. That's the ones I'm talking about. How in the world... Can we love those people? Well, answer this question. How in the world does God love you? I mean, have you not sinned against God more times than you could count? We could sit here tonight and we could begin to write on paper our sins, each one of us, from now to the time that we die and we would never leave this building. That is the sin that we have sinned against God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And yet somehow, 
God chose to forgive us. Somehow, God chose to love us. We see in the book of Romans that while we were still enemies of God, we have done nothing. We had done nothing but sin. That is all that God knew that we would do was sin because that's what human beings do. We in our sin, Paul says, were enemies of God. But yet, while we were still enemies, Christ died for us so that we will no longer be enemies of God, but we will be reconciled. We will become friends of God. Our sins will be washed away. Do you want God to forgive you today? Well, I would hope that we all want God to forgive us today. But how can we expect God to forgive us if we are not willing to forgive others? If we expect God to forgive us when we are not willing to forgive others, we have not read God's Word. If we expect God to forgive us when we have not forgiven others, we have not understood who God is. Because God looks down on all of us who through our sin hated God, when we choose to reject God, when we choose sin over God, we are those who hate God. Yet even though we hate God, God chose to love us. So who in your life can you not forgive today? Now you may be tempted to say, well, he's God, it's easier for him. Well, maybe it is or maybe it's not. Perhaps it's no easier for God to forgive us than it is for us to forgive others. Now, certainly God is perfect in every way. But perhaps as God looked down upon you and I, perhaps it was just as difficult for him. After all, he had to give his only begotten son to cover the cost of our sins. Perhaps it was an easy, easy thing for God, or perhaps it was a little more difficult. But God overcame. God gave us a way to overcome, to be forgiven of our sins, to forgive us of our evil and our hatred. And he did so only by one way, and that is through love. The solution to our hatred is love. That is how God overcame our sins. Not because we were deserving to be forgiven of our sins. Not because we were not evil. Because we certainly are evil. But God defeated our sin through love. God allowed us to be victorious over our sin through love. And that is what Jesus commands us to do. For those people who hate you, who have done you wrong, it is so easy for us to hate them. But if we want to follow God's example, if we want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, then we must follow the words of Jesus. We have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Perhaps some of your friends and family would give you such horrible advice. It's okay. They've done you wrong. It's okay. I'd be angry with them too. I would hate them too. But don't feel justified in your anger and your hatred for others just because others agree that you should hate. Because the command of Jesus says just the opposite. You have heard it said, love your enemies or excuse me, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But Jesus says, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Praise the Lord that God loves us. Praise the Lord that God forgives us. That's the power of love. You say, I don't know how I can ever 
I can never forgive somebody who has done evil to me. Well, that's the power of love. You say, well, I don't have that type of love yet. Well, that's okay. God will help you. But it starts with prayer. Perhaps that needs to be our prayer today. God, I know you love me. God, I love you. God, I want to be loved, but I am struggling to love this person or these people. God understands that we are weak. But if we pray to the Lord, if we seek the Lord, he will help us. He will help change our heart. And through his word and the power of Jesus Christ, he can give us a love like his. It's a work in progress. Oh, wouldn't it be great if we all had a love like God today as we sit on these pews? But perhaps it takes time. Time to seek and time to pray. Perhaps your hatred has been building for years. But perhaps today is the day that you begin to pray and say, God, I'm tired of the burden of hate. God, help me to love others and to forgive those who do me wrong, just as Jesus Christ has done for me. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today. and God, this is such a hard passage. It's hard, dear Lord, because we can sit here and we can think of and make lists of people that are just rotten, God. And they have done rotten things to us. And God, if we are honest, even if we know your word, sometimes we just don't want to forgive it. But God, you got to change our heart. We need you to fix us, dear Lord. We are broken. If we come in here today with that spirit of not wanting to forgive people, first, God, I pray that you would help us to check our heart to make sure that we are really yours. God, perhaps we cannot love and forgive like you because maybe we have never been forgiven by you and experienced your love. God, maybe there are some here today and they realize the weight of their sin. Maybe today they realize that they are loved by you. Maybe they never knew that, dear Lord. But God, maybe through your word today, they know that even though they are enemies of you, God, through their sin, that they are loved by you. God, I pray that if there is one in this room that does not know your love, that they'd put their faith in Jesus today and experience that in a way that is indescribable, dear Lord. True love is really hard to explain, God. But I pray that if there are some that don't know it through Jesus today, they would know it. God, maybe there are some in this room today and they are yours. And maybe they know your word and they know they're supposed to love and they know they're not supposed to hate and they know they're supposed to forgive, but God, there's just something in them that just doesn't want to, dear Lord. Well, I pray that you shake that loose today, that you break it up, God you give them a heart that seeks and desires to follow you. God, I don't know what evils have been committed against anyone in here. We all have things we don't like, people we don't like, dear Lord. But I pray today that maybe there needs to be some healing in the lives of some. Maybe they need to let loose of some of that hatred. Maybe today they need to begin the journey of forgiveness and of love. God, meet them where they are. <clears throat> We are not in a good place when we hate. But God, we cannot get out of that place without you. So I pray, God, that we'd seek you today. That you'd help us to bring forth our enemies before you. Both today and tomorrow and in the days to come. That God, by your power, that we may learn to love like you do. God, we pray for our enemies and God, it may change them. Or it may not change them a bit, dear Lord. The people we pray for may continue to be as evil as they can be. But God, if we continue to seek you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, dear Lord, and praying for our enemies, God, it will change us. So God, I pray that you'd change hearts today. Let them be hearts that put their faith in Jesus, possibly for the first time. Let it be hearts that already belong to you, dear Lord, that let go of some of the hatred and pain that they've harbored for all these years and that they find love and forgiveness and peace in you. 
And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.